Hey guys, um, uh, there's a reason why I titled this message the way I titled it, but it was birthed in prayer. I'm just praying one day, like I always do, pretty much. I don't remember, it was early in the morning, it was about six months ago, maybe eight months ago, it was a while back. And the Lord spoke to me, he said, I want my people tougher than hell. I'm like, I've been praying about it for a while, guys. It's not very Christianese. You know, I told a few really strong Christians that are strong in the Lord. And I got the stink eye, pretty much. And I was like, but I've been that's how that's that's how I, that's how I do it. I am not necessarily the sharpest knife in the drawer. I just know where to go. I keep going back to him. Lord, show me, teach me. Just constantly questioning him not questioning him so much as the as a, as a question but wanting direction what do i do with this <clears throat> so i'm going to share something in the natural but it correlates into the spiritual one right now i'm facing probably three in the medical area life-threatening seriously um, one just got solved. It just was released on the 4th of July. And the diagnosis was I had two really bad infected toes to, into the bone. Got all five of them off. I looked at the doctor. I said, well, what's wrong with the other three? Well, they're gonna, you're going to lose them anyhow and da-da-da. And uh, you, can still, you can still walk. You may not be able to run. And it was an eight-week hospital stay. I told him, no, get rid of the infection first. I want a fighting chance. They booted me out of the hospital, guys, really, literally. So, and I argued with them. It's, uh, man, maybe I can pull it up and show you, but I still got it. Here it is. It's a pick line. It's called a pick line. To get antibiotics intravenously into your system. And you can do it at home. It was approved by the insurance. The hospital didn't want to do it because they wanted the three hundred thousand dollar bill or whatever it was going to be, you know, for all the hospital stays and everything else. And the first line of defense, of, of course, you know, they're saying they were trying to save my life. Just cut. And I just came from a doctor, two doctors. I got to see one more tomorrow. But um, you know what the diagnosis is now? I had to switch doctors. And in two days, they, they started this. I've been on for almost eight weeks, guys. Right at eight weeks. Three hours a day. A lot of, my system is pretty wiped out over it. Literally. I'm just kind of recovering now, getting back. The diagnosis? Come see me in three months. Everything's healed up. I got, I'm not going to share them all with you too because I don't want to try to, I just don't, okay? But trust me, I, I'm facing some pretty serious challenges in a couple areas. But, <clears throat> like, man, Lord, I know I'm pretty tough, but man, Lord, it's created some other issues and it's just like, man, Lord, it's been like a downhill snowball, you know, and the, it, so it's like the pruning hurts. And it's like, is it, am I being chastised by the Lord? Is it Stevie in the flesh? Is it the devil and the enemy coming against, coming against the, bo the body of Christ and his children? It's all three of them, actually. But I'm trying to, I was like, man, Lord, it's, so I'm praying a lot for some direction, some of it. I've created some challenges. But this is the natural part of it. That's kind of the natural part of it. <laughs> When I was praying when I came in here to do this message, this is the spiritual part, and I'll go back to the natural part again. <clears throat> I was praying, and I said, well, you know, this message kept coming up. I was like, okay, I'll put it on tonight. So I was like, but normally I like scriptures. I just got to, usually you want a scripture to go with. I said, I don't really have anything to go with this. 
Lord spoke to me. I was walking up my front door up to the car to get something. I was going to come in and do this message. Just spoke to me. And he said, it's in Revelation 11, 6 through 16. Read it, guys. He wants his people, his body, tougher than hell. This is natural, and it was years ago. It was my dad. He's passed away now. And I heard he fought valiantly in Korea. It's called Lamplighters. They circled and orbited in the Pusan Valley when the Korean War very first started, and there was just an enclave of Marines trapped. They orbited the whole battlefield for hours, or the whole night, dropping flares to save their lives because the Chinese would just come in and just hordes and waves, and that was their whole, you know, they would try to do it under cover of darkness. Kind of like what they're doing now. Well, not exactly like what they're doing now. But the, um, so, you know, I had heard all those stories. I, was, I, was, I think I was like maybe 11, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, that was something like that. I was a young kid. Went to houseboat on the Mississippi, Minnesota. Well, my dad was like 150 pounds, and that was after he got out of the shower, probably. Very short guy, 5'10". Wasn't my hero at that time. Kind of thought he was wimpy, honestly, a little bit. I was a teenager, you know, you know the stuff you go through. Now, and I got older, I really realized, but, and so I'm on the hospital, right? Well, there was a guy, he was my hero, or so I thought. Just bear with me. His name was Charlie. He was a thug, guys. At a chop shop, just, I don't know how related he was in the crime ways, but he was, you know, in the crime. And if you didn't, you didn't like what he did, he beat the crap out of you. It's part of my stuff, sorry. That wasn't Christianese either, sorry. <clears throat> well, this guy parked in a slip in his boat. Well, it's on the Mississippi. So Charlie's circling around out there and he's yelling at me, go get this guy. Well, I go up to the, the marina and it was a bar and this old, big old guy, maybe 300 pounds, six, two, three, the old guy though, drinking his beer. And I said, hey, you know, to do, the guy that, you know, you you parked with somebody slip. Can you come move your boat? Yeah, I will in a minute. Let me finish my beer. Like, you don't know who you're messing with. So I come back down. Charlie's circling outside a slip. He's got a 357 pointing at this guy's boat. About to shoot it. He's going to try to sink it. It was a little bit out there. That was my hero. So the guy comes, moves his boat, comes back, there's an altercation. Charlie, boom, one time, knocked the guy plumb off his feet into the river and he jumped on his head and he scissored him, found the guy. Literally, I'm not making this up. Guy was dead, drowned. And my dad hears all the splashing and commotion coming on as Charlie's getting out and he just, he had shorts on, no shirt, and no shoes. And he's running on a dock, all these slips. And some of them didn't have boats in them. And he's just going back and forth. This is the Mississippi guy's current, fairly strong. Even in Minnesota, it's still pretty strong up there. Water murky, muddy. And, and my dad gets the last slip. And it's, you know, two foot wide, water on both sides, and there's a big expanse between the last slip and the next one is there's a boat ramp and then there's a there's a gas dock. So it's a pretty good, you know, I mean, it's like the last stitch effort. But then it reaches in the water. I couldn't see anything. Muddy Mississippi, that's why they call it muddy Mississippi. It was just muddy. Grabbed the sky by the head of his hair. It's 300 pound guy. My dad's 150 pounds. He's on one knee on a two foot wide dock. Water raging in the Mississippi. 
He pulls this guy out, starts pulling him out. Charlie sees him and runs at my dad like a mad bull. And he's about three or four feet away. And I'm like, man, my dad's toast. Charlie's going to kill him too. He just killed this other guy. Drowning. My dad, one knee, one hand on this guy's head, 300 pound guy in the current, had him by the head of his hair, by the nap of his hair. Thank God he had some hair, not like me. Pulling him out. Raised one finger up, pointed it right at Charlie and said, don't you, and it wasn't real Christianese what he said at all. I won't repeat it. Dare try anything with me today. And this Charlie was 300 pounds too, 6'3", 6'4", big burly guy. Tough as, tough as hell. It was tougher than hell that day. Charlie just stopped in his tracks. He got out of it because the owner of the marina was a, um, worked for the sheriff's department. It's just a long story, but they had to revive the guy. My dad pulled him out. A bunch of people came around and helped pull the guy out. They had to revive him, do CPR on him and everything. I mean, the water's blowing out of his lungs and it's a mess. He was dead, definitely dead. Ambulance came, took him away. That's what I'm talking about. That's natural, yes, but in the spirit is what he wants us. Cause look around guys. Joel's army's coming for he wants his people tougher than hell. Because there's a lot of folks full of hell right now. Running rampant. It's like the death, it's like the it's like a bull running loose in the, in the city. And a lot of people, people, even the church people are sitting there at the fence strategizing and looking and planning and creating or whatever. Time to jump the fence, wrestle that bull to the ground. I mean, blood's not ugly it's dying guys tougher than hell i was at church one time and a friend of mine we were talking and we're like man there's people drowning this was several years ago not it's even worse now but drowning in sin and in life and just mess dying he said somebody needs to jump in and save them he said instead they're there was some people at the church and the administration. He said, instead, they just want to send out a memo. I ordered life jackets. Who cares? <laughs> it's action time, guys. That's the part I'm talking about. I'm not talking about running to the, doing like all this crazy. Some of the, they weren't all crazy. A lot of them were just good, really solid Christians that went to the Capitol on the 6th, prayed. The few crazy people, you know, I'm not talking about trying to do something stupid. You're not going to get anywhere with a lot of that stupidity anyhow. What I'm talking about is birth and prayer. Tougher than hell. Because we're going to overcome this by the words of our testimony. That's also in Revelations. Love you guys. It's time to take a stand. There is no, there is no more fence riding on this deal. No more, guys. You're in or you're out. Time to be tougher than hell. I'm not talking about just barking on YouTube and Facebook either. Do what the Lord tells you to do. It's action time, guys. Don't just act like Christians. Take action. Birth it in prayer. I'll end it with this, guys, okay? Who's listening to cover Governor Cuomo anymore? No one, because he isn't the governor anymore. And look at all the mayhem that he created in New York. And um, with the abortion issue to the senior citizens, to the garbage. 
destructive. Not there anymore. Yeah, he, he got taken out, got caught, basically got caught with his pants down, but a whole different story, but he's still out. Prayer does work. Action, guys. And we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, power, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So what are you going to do about it? Tougher than hell. Love you guys. Um, see you soon.